We found that camo is just this ubiquitous, iconic expression that everyone understands. It's something you don't have to explain. You see it in fashion, you see it on products, and you basically see it everywhere. I have the Arctic Camo Xbox One controller with me today. We were able to really evolve Night Ops and play with the colors and the materials to do something really interesting with Arctic Camo. Looking at this camo, it's inspired by woodland camo, which is really recognizable to people. It's very iconic. We've kind of spun it in a really interesting way. We're using a clear translucent resin, which is letting you see the insides. We're actually using that resin as one of the camo shapes and then floating the other camo shapes in colored ink on top of it. It was really awesome to be able to use a translucent clear plastic as a base for this controller because we're actually taking the idea of camouflage and making the inside of the controller part of the camouflage. That was sort of our design twist on, on the Arctic camo. Forces Camo is kind of a take or influenced by M90 Camo, which was a Swedish peacekeeping camo. It really fit with the Xbox One um, form language. When we first introduced Xbox One, we were really careful about keeping everything clean, crisp, precise. The shapes are kind of angular and sharp and repetitive. We looked at a lot of different ways we could spin camo. And honestly, it just, it made the most sense to us from like a philosophical perspective. It's peacekeeping, it's neutral, it's global. I would call this a woodland inspired camo. This camo is very recognizable. And what's cool about it is that we can do the traditional colorways that you would see, like the kind of army green and blues, but then we can also put a different spin on things like the gold hits. And it, since this camo is used in fashion so much, it's still very recognizable and understood as a camo. If we were to do the same thing with the forces camo, it would be a little more difficult to recognize as a camo. It starts kind of turning into colored shapes. It's really rooted in its traditional colors where we have a lot more flexibility with this. We used a custom color on the midframe underneath the top case. That's why you're seeing white come through. It's usually black. And we also used a custom wire color up in the ABXY area. We added a white cable where there used to be a black one. So the triggers have the neural texture. This is actually a diamond texture, and it is the same texture as you have around the thumbsticks. This controller is uh, made by pad print process, which means that each of these fields of color is like a hit, like almost from a rubber stamp. So we're picking up the ink and stamping it onto the product. And it's the way that we find we get the best aesthetic results. There's a lot of different ways to print on a surface like this. Using a translucent resin we've learned during this project allows a lot of light in and then it allows a lot of light back out. So anytime the ink is uneven or anytime you have overlaps of lighter inks over darker inks, all of the shadowing, kind of pitting and shadowing shows up. It's such a simple, like beautiful, clean look, but to get here was a lot more difficult than we thought it would be. We redid it probably three or four times to get it perfect. With special editions, we want to create something that tells our story, but we also want to create something that speaks to enough Xbox fans that it really makes sense. Camo's got a lot of nostalgia to it, and it's something that's very easily understood. And then the flip side, it's just really relevant to gaming. We have a lot of first-person shooter games, a lot of military style games. I hope people see it and just think it's as badass as I do. <laughs>